walks in, we can just close the door right there. So, um, of course, everything everything that, that I'm going to cover, guys, just so you know, comes from um, this great, great source. Let's see, where are we? Which is this one right here. I had it open already. This one right here. Okay, which I'll share it. Okay. Um, which of course is the it's 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 the place to start, right? It's a series of uh, how many is it? Four, thirteen videos. I'm gonna go over the first five. Okay, we're gonna go over the first five right here. That's um, that's this document that I have here. So you know, yesterday Sunday, I was uh, going through the video, listening, past pausing it, and then typing, generating screenshots. I kind of giving myself notes, right? So I did this first kind of half for you guys. After that, you know, what I mean, I'm showing you the ways, right, of how to how to how to um, go about this. Now, additionally, let's not forget that well, we live in the year 2019, and uh, this is the uh, Grasshopper website, which should be your number one source of uh, information. Um, as you see, right, the first thing is getting started. Right. Uh, the introduction videos that I was talking about right now, it's going to open right there. Uh, but let's see if you go to learn, getting started. Uh, there are a lot of sources, guys. So you're not alone in the world, right? I mean, every, I don't know, a, gr a great number of architecture students right now are going through the same process as we are right now, which is trying to get our heads around this this content okay so there's tons of resources online um of many many um approaches and applications right and it's interesting as well that you start pinpointing what kind of architecture right all those buildings perhaps that you're attracted or architects that you're interested in right who's using them and how are they using them okay and i think that's where also kind of like the power and the potential of it comes okay that that you know the possibilities are endless okay so so definitely and as you start seeing with this um you don't start from scratch okay and as a matter of fact the way that we learn anything right as we start is just copying right? i mean we kind of start mimicking right and though we are going to cover at least some very basic stuff you know just so that again we can, we know what we're doing but as you go through this, you'll see that a lot of uh, information has been already generated. So there's tons of libraries online. Okay. Now, one in a specific that I did add it on, onto our Blackboard, right, under reading, is the graph, Grasshopper Primer, right, which is this guy right here, Grasshopper Primer, third edition. Uh, if you were in my media class, it's kind of like the, the Rhino manual. Right, and it goes through all of the the different parts of it. So it's definitely where I would start as well. I added it online on on Blackboard, um, so that you don't have to download it from here. But know where it came from. This is uh, the website view, which is actually pretty nice as well. And it takes you through through uh, through their steps. Now, something that I do need to point out, perhaps right away. Um, that I know, and when this was made, is that for my two Mac users, right, there is no Grasshopper for Mac yet, okay? So that is something to consider, right? And again, whether you do the parallels, you bootcamp your laptop, or, you know, you work here at the lab, um, again, um, just the limitations of working on a Mac, as you move forward, your education will become more and more apparent. Right? So again, um, and sometimes, uh, at the same time, I know that it's not just, oh, okay, cool, I'll just grab a new laptop, right? But, you know, I mean, there's ways. There's bootcamp and there's parallels, right? Bootcamp, well, you just boot your computer as a Mac or a PC. I think that one's free. But then again, you're working with two different versions of, 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 uh, of, of uh, operating systems, right? So you partition your drive and it's a whole thing. There's parallels where you can flip back and forth between Windows. And I know because I have a Mac, right? Like, I'm a Mac user. Um, for certain things, right? I mean, I just I just use Mac for email and maybe Illustrator and Photoshop, but 3D modeling, I use my, uh, well, I use the computer, the school's computer. This is the school's right here. So I use this laptop. Um, and it's just so much easier. Just modeling, it's something about modeling that in Windows is just much easier. But anyway, uh, that's a disclaimer right there. There's no Grasshopper version for Mac, okay? So tons of resources. Let's see what else do I have. 
Um, and then, you know, as well, this is from one of the websites. I can't remember which one. Um, which, again, if you're like, still, okay, so, but what's the big deal? What can we make? You know, just a few images of uh, what's been made with the parametric design. Uh, and, of course, additionally, right, I mean, books, right, I mean, magazine right there has a good amount of, uh, of um, articles on, on computational architecture right there. Um, yes, and, and some really good instructors of mine are, are on that magazine right there. And uh, um, yeah, guys, this is uh, this is where where it all started. Um, okay, so I'll go through it again. Um, the link is right there for the video, so that you can follow along. Uh, but I'm also hopefully yes, recording here. This thing something stop. Um, so of course we are on Rhino. Right, how do we start Grasshopper? If uh, you, should, you get, I don't think anyone is working on, on Rhino 5 anymore, right? Because Rhino 6, uh, it comes with it, okay? So we type Grasshopper and Grasshopper opens right here, okay? Uh, if you have uh, an older version of Rhino, such as 5, um, you have to download uh, Rhino and install it. I mean, Rhino. Uh, well, yeah, you have to download Rhino. <laughs> But then you also have to install Grasshopper. So in this new release of Grass of, of Rhino, it was really nice that it was already um, included, which tells you how much McNeil, who is the the, the maker of, of Rhino, believes in Grasshopper. So Grasshopper is Grasshopper is a plugin. I mean, it was not necessarily you know made with Rhino, right? Someone else had the opportunity, um, you know, and you know put it together. And I don't want to give wrong credit to someone but actually if i'm not mistaken it's actually this person right here right david ruthen who is one of the uh, makers right of, of grasshopper okay so we're on on grasshopper we open up the basics right um one of one of the most important things is that uh it's a separate window right grasshopper it's a separate window and it's actually a separate file okay so if i actually open this folder right here I, I, I label them the same, right? I mean, so I have Grasshopper intro, right? Uh, that's my Rhino file, but underneath it, there's the Grasshopper file. And what is that file? It's a GH. Now you'll see that it's a dot GH. Um, so make sure that, that you're aware of that, that, that again, um, and again, a lot of the times, you know, you have a definition, you open up Rhino and you won't see anything until you open the grasshopper definition and phew, everything kind of pops up. Okay. Um, so this is where also working with dual monitors, it's very nice. You know, I mean, you're going to see this is where, you know, I, I was like, oh, I remember. I remember why I, I had to have a double monitor at school. Um, because, you know, I mean, just going be watching tutorials, having Grasshopper and having Rhino all open at the same time, you need that extra space. Or if you have a huge monitor at home, that works as well. But uh, so it's a different window and uh, we save it separately. OK, uh, very easily we have menus and tabs right in Rhino. So we have the menus right here, you know, simple things right there. But most importantly is the tabs. Right, which have different components. All of them, um, or well, a good amount should be. You should they they should ring a bell, right? It should be oh okay okay. See so primitive, right? Lines, right? Circles, arcs, and different types of arcs, polygons, etc. Uh, divisions, analysis, right? Endpoints, control points, etc. Splines, utilities such as explode, fillet. Right, projections, uh, surfaces, uh, freeform surfaces versus primitive surfaces, right? cones, cylinders, and whatnot. And and again, you'll see that each of these components right here, as you drop them, right, have different components. Okay, but not 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 get ahead of myself on that one right there. So, uh, so the tabs is all the tools which Grasshopper Grasshopper provides for making algorithms. Within each tab, there is a bunch of panels with different names. If you click on the black bar, it will fold out as we did, and you will see all the components in that panel with tips and names, which is very, um, you know, familiar from oops, from um, Rhino as well, right? So if I place my cursor right on top of something, extrude along, extrude curves and surfaces along a curve, 
and then you can decide if that's the right um, uh, component that you're looking for. Okay. Um, uh, beneath that, we have the canvas, which is where we draw or compose our, our algorithm. Okay, uh, and where we work in the grasshopper, which is this area right here. Okay, so we, we zoom this. So you again, you have two screens basically, uh, which which you are working now. Um, okay, uh, you know, and we can start with something very simple, uh, such as in Rhino, which is a line, right? See how it differs from drawing a line in uh, something in Rhino versus drawing something in Grasshopper. Right. So how do we draw a line in Rhino? Right. Well, to begin with, there's multiple ways. Right. So if I go to Rhino and type a line, okay. Um, so the first thing asks me, okay, so the start of a line, but then there's this all these settings up here, right? That you can use in order to draw a line. Okay. But in essence, right. Um, all right, the default is to specify a start point and an end point somewhere, and you get a line segment in Rhino as a result. There were four events to make this happen. All right, let's see what those were. So pick a point, uh, pick another point, and I have a line. Right? So let's see. So first, right, we typed in command, right, the line, line command, right? Then I have to pick two points, right? Uh, uh, pick the end point, of course, and then the, the final event is that I get a line segment, okay? Now, except for the final event, they're all now gone, right? And they are in the past. We can no longer change or access them, but in Grasshopper, all four things remain live all the time. To make a line in Grasshopper, we will use a line component. We can find it in the curve tab primitive panel, okay? So let's take a look at that, right? I come over here, right? Um, where was that? Right. Well, it was in the curve tab right there, the primitive panel. As in Rhino, there are multiple ways to make lines. You can make a line that fits a bunch of points, right? A line that fits through points between two planes, or from four points, but we will use the same one as the one that we just used in Rhino, which is line from start point to end point. Okay, so we're gonna select this one. Let's go ahead and see how it looks. All right, so I'm gonna give the primitive line. Again, I have selected the component. I have to click on the canvas and drop it. I'm way out and you know, zoom in, works the same way, scroll in and out. I am panning with my right click. And I can just drag and drop this this um, components as I see fit. Okay. Now notice that nothing happened except that I have that component. Okay. So if you click on it and click on the cameras, you will get a brand new line component, which is what we got right there. Okay. Uh, doing this step is sort of the same as running the line command in Rhino. It is now there, but I still need to supply start and end points before I actually do it, before it actually does something. Now, one of the main attributes that is right away recognizable, it's its color, right? It is also orange, which is probably its most obvious property here. If it is orange, it means that there is a warning. In this case, the warning is that there is no input. And you're gonna start seeing these bubbles, right? These bubbles right here, sometimes even worse uh, is that it's red. Right, but this case is yellow. If you actually hover over it, you get that little panel right there. It says, this object contains two warnings. Click on the balloon to see all the messages. And it tells you right there, input parameter A failed to collect data. Input parameter B failed to collect data. All right, sounds pretty robotic, right? So there we go. Input parameter A failed to collect data. Input parameter B. So again, the software will do its best to try to help you as a human. Like, this is what I need, right? Like, I'm missing something. But then again, there's a lot of times that, again, it only goes so far as to try to help us. Hmm? And we click on the little warning symbol to see that, to see that both input parameter A and B failed to collect data. So they are empty. As a result, this thing does not actually run. It cannot finish making a land segment. 
In Rhino, we click on the viewport twice to specify a start and end point. We can do the same in Grasshopper, right? And we do that, right, by right clicking. And again, you'll see that you can right click in all of these uh, parameters that we have inside of the, the components, right? So these are your, your parameters, okay? So we have that A is your start point and B is your end point, okay? So I can actually right click and I can tell Grasshopper, hey, let's set a point. Right, so I click right there, set a point. It takes me now to, to Rhino. Right, and I draw a point, which now, not really a point, right? It's a, it's a point. <laughs> it's not a physical point, but it's a location, it's a location of a point. Okay? And you see that it marks it as a, that X right there. We can do the same. Go to B, right click, set one point. And we do that. And that's, you know, our line in Grasshopper. Now, what changed right here on this little thing? Uh, it's great. Right? It's great. Now, now, now we're good. Right now, it's telling us, hey, we're good. We're good. Right? No yellow, no red. So, we did that. We right click, set one point. All right, we click on Rhino to specify a single location. And it gives us that red cross. We do the same for B, right? Set another point, right? And we get that line segment, segment, okay? Now, what we have done so far, right? Now, what we have so far, right? And this is important. It's a component with input parameters and output parameters, right? We haven't talked about the output parameters, right? But the output is the actual line. So, again, you really need to see, well, I guess it helps to really see it as a machine. Right? I mean, you feed it something, and you get something out of it. In this case, what are the two things that we fed it? Yes? Two what? The two points, right? And then in return, it gives us a, a line, right? And again, you place your mouse right here on top of it, right? Line segment, okay? Let's go back. You will notice in right now that this geometry created by Grasshopper cannot be selected. It does not actually exist in Rhino. It is only drawn in the viewport. However, if we select the component in Grasshopper, the line segment created from Grasshopper goes green. We can see that this component and this geometry belong together. And actually, Joey pointed out that out. Like, what changed? Oh, it's green. Wait, red, great. It actually means that if you highlight the component, it will um, color green on Grasshopper, uh, the one that it's paired with. Okay, but check this out. Right? So I click somewhere out of the canvas, I deselect. I go down to Rhino, I can move this line, because it's a Rhino line, but I try to select the, rhino, the line created by, by Grasshopper, and I can't, okay? So Rhino is just, Rhino is acting like a visualizer. Right? It's, it's, it's uh, giving me a preview of what this is doing over here, okay? which we actually talked a little bit about right now. Since we cannot select these points, we cannot move them around like we would we could in Rhino, right, if we switch the points on, right, which by now in this latest version, if we pick any line on Rhino, it gives us those points right there, and we can move on easily, right? So, so okay, so I can edit those points right there, but we're interested in the grasshopper component on this, so let's keep going. This is currently not possible that with the geometry created with grasshopper, right? So it seems a little bit limited. So. Instead of just picking points and coordinates, let's pick actual Rhino objects which exist in the file as our endpoints. These are actually Rhino points, right? And for this, to give you guys the cue, the command is point, okay? What do I mean? Well, if we actually go into Rhino and we type point, right? And we pick a point, right click to repeat, and I draw two points, okay? Um, right. And then we go back to our grasshopper component and in, right, we go back to set one point, right? We right click on it, but now we're going to specify to use that particular points right there. Right. And for that, we need to change the point type. Okay. What do I mean? Well, I go back right here, set one point. Okay. Now here we were in coordinates and I would just pick. Right, click. But if I actually click on type, right, it expands this. Now I pick a point, right? 
or click on point. Now it's asking me point object to reference, right? So I pick that point, right? And it uses that. Now I can move this point and the line gets updated. Okay. I can do the same right here. Right click, set one point. Rather than actually clicking to, to set a coordinate, I change the type to point, right? Pick that point. And now I can edit it, right? Whoops. Fairly similar as I can with Rhino. I mean, I have my points right there. So right now it's like a like a tie. Right? It's like Rhino one, Grasshopper one. I right? was like, eh, not that impressive. Okay. So well, from there, right? We added that point, and we do the same for the second point. Okay. Now, since these points are tied to Rhino point, we can actually drag them around and they update in real time, as I showed you guys right now. Okay, so that was the, the first part right there of the video. Now, if we take this a little bit further, right, let's draw two curves in Rhino, and we will be deleting the geometry that we have right here. Okay, so again, if I select that, delete that, okay, delete this right here, so I'm going to draw two curves right here. Right. Right. Do that. Okay. So we draw those two curves. Now, you guys familiar with the divide command? Mm -hmm. No. It does just that. All right. So let's divide them, right? And divide them both into 20 segments. Now we have all these points of Rhino objects. Okay. So if we go in here and type divide, right? So let that curve right there. Enter. Now number of segments, right? 20. Gives me that right there. All right. So I can right click, select this line, right click, right click, 20 points. Okay. All right. Now, now, right, what happens if we go into our parameter A, this time select multiple points, right? And we'll select all of these lines right there for our input A, right? So we go to line. Uh, by the way, I am, uh, anytime that you want to look for something, right, in, in the component, you double click on the canvas. Right, and this time I I, 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 line, I draw a line. Again, just as in Rhino, when you type any command, you'll see that a list pops up because there's there's commands that share the parts of that same command or there's more than one way of doing a line, such as this one. And I'll talk more about the difference between these two components. But for right now, and we have the queue that we have, right? It tells you right there, line, create a line between two points. This one's, what does that say? Contains a collection of line segments. We don't have them. We want to create them, right? So that should be the cue is like, yeah, I don't know about that, right? So line, right? We have that component right there. Now, the idea here is now, what if I go in here? Now I set multiple points. I can go into, um, right? And I select them. Now the order matters, right? In which you select them. And I'll talk more about that, right? So I select all those points right there, right, kind of like that. And then I right click over here, so multiple points, and I select all of these ones. Right, right click, enter, right, and it created those lines, right? Because I have that input. Right? I mean, like, hey, A is all the points from this uh, curve right here, and this is B from this point right here. However, that is not quite right, right? Why? Because they're not corresponding, right? This point should match as such, but all of a sudden, this guy went over here, this guy over here. That, again, guys, has to do with the order in which you selected the points, okay? So order matters on this, okay? So let me show you guys, um, you know, um, 
how it should look. Whoops, actually, I do need those. I just need to reset this right here. Set multiple points right here. So actually, I need to pick this right in order. And you see how it draws those blue lines right there? That's the sequence. And I don't know if you saw right now, like that, for example, is going to give us an error. Okay? So um, it's just the, the hang of, um, you know, kind of how select these guys right here. All right, so did I select that one already? All right, so escape right here. And to avoid any, you know, right now, I'll just go boom, boom, boom. All right, because we're going to actually talk about a much faster way of doing this. But at least just to illustrate how uh, the logic of this component, which is a line one, works, and how it should actually look uh, done correctly. Let's see, we have that right there. And we have that, right? So that's how technically this should look. Okay. So come over here. And that's pretty much what we did. So the same for the parameter B. Select the points, the curve, enter. All right. Now we have 21 points in A, 21 points in B, and 21 segments. What do I mean? So again, if I come in here into Grasshopper and I place now my cursor on top of this input, right? You, you see that it'll give me right a list, right? This is right there. 21 locally defined values, right? Reference point, right? 21 locally defined values for B and 21 locally defined values for the line segment, right? So again, we divide it on 20, it gives us 20 points. We have those uh, shown there. Now, the problem here though, um, this was manually intensive, right? I mean, it was like, okay, here I am clicking, clicking, right? We have to actually select all the points by hand, making sure that they're in the right order. And if we change it, right, if we have to go back and select them all again, um, and we update them, it's not gonna update. This is not a very efficient way. What do I mean? Well, let's say that I change my mind, right? Or Munoz changes your mind. You're like, no, you know, change that. And you update this curve, right? You start moving it, right? You start controlling its points right there. It's not updating, right? And it's, and if it, it's not updating correctly, right? This one is following the point, right? So it's not even along now the curve. So what would I have to do? I would go ha have to go back in here, right? Divide, select all of that, the 20 line segments, right? Clear these values right here, right? Remap these values right here. So forget it, right? So no bueno. No, well, not ideal. And remember about algorithms, right? I mean, again, it was to solve a problem, but also efficiently, right? So it's also kind of like the part uh, how can we do this the fastest, more efficient way? Okay. Now, instead, what we do now is we actually mimic the divide curve command in Grasshopper, so it is automated from the start. Mm, okay. So, delete the component in Grasshopper, delete the input points in Rhino, but not the curves. Okay. So, we'll delete that. Delete these points right here. Delete this point right there. Okay. What does that mean? Now, the purpose here is to actually perform the divide command inside of Grasshopper, right? If, oh, typo right there. I should actually be marking this before I hand it out to you guys. So I'm already on page 13. Oh, page numbers will be great. Okay. Okay. Um, if you do not uh, know where to find components, you can always double click on the canvas and start typing what you're looking for. And I just talked about that right now. We click on the canvas and look for something, okay? Double click on the canvas and type divide. There is a lot of components which have the word divide in them. Looking through this list, you typically find what you're looking for reasonably quickly. Some, uh, we don't know the name and then we have to actually start searching through the tabs. But for divide curve, it's fairly obvious. Okay, so go back in here, type divide. Okay, so we have divide curve. Okay, now again, each component, right, has its attributes, right? It's asking you for stuff, right? So what's C? And again, how are this called? 
right? These are your your inputs right there, right? Which um, what what are they, right? So wants a curve, right? It wants a count, number of segments, kinks, right? So let's see more on this, okay? So we have our divide component, all right? Um, uh, it is a little bit more complicated than the light component, right? We saw, and maybe I'll, I'll add it right here. It has more, more stuff, right? Light component. Here we have, right, two, uh, two inputs, right? Two, two variables, A and B. Um, versus, right, this three that we have, okay? Uh, three inputs and three outputs. Although, of course, first the error or warning saying input parameter. So again, we have that error, right? We have nothing there. If we place our cursor on top of it, I'll tell you that the parameter is four. In this case actually asks for an actual curve. Okay, so we do that. The N input asks for a number of segments, and it actually has a default value of 10. How can we look at that? Well, again, I place my cursor right on top of it, right? Count N number of segments, one locally defined value, 10. Okay, good. And the input and the K input is a setting that tells you whether or not or not points will be added on kings on the curve and is a default is set on default set as false as default. So we go into the the uh, the component, right click on C, and we set one curve. Okay, so right click, set one curve, pick one curve, right, and what do we what do we have now? Right? Yeah, right, which is what? Huh? Yes, right, it's the output, right? Which is the number of what? Division, right? We're dividing this, right, by, by a number, right? So we're dividing it in 10 segments, right? And what's the output? 11 points. Okay, but now again, I can update this curve and that division remains there. Okay, so let's keep one. Right? So set one curve. We'll import a curve from Rhino, click on the first curve in Rhino, such I did. Now these points are actually live. If we change the curve, if we change the control points or the shape of it, it actually updates those points so we no longer have to select them by hand later. And that's key, right? I mean, again, let's say that this line now, you know, moves all of a sudden, right? Um, we edit them, right? We start doing that right there. Whoops. And I actually moved it on the, on the other axis right there. So, but again, even, right, if it's in a different plane, the division remains. Okay, so we'll go back there. Okay. Uh, let's edit it again. This time we'll make a second completely separate component for a second curve, but it is the same steps. Double click on the canvas, type divide curve and select it. Right? And we'll set that curve right there. So we have that right there. Okay. So I'm going to delete this right here. Double click again, divide curve. Okay. Have that. Again, right click set one curve now i pick this other curve okay now again if i click on this icon right that gets highlighted uh green so like this one that gets highlighted green so far so good all right guys. all right so in addition to the points which is the output p we also have t right which is the curve tangent vectors for every point here, we have a tangent vector, which tells us where the curve is traveling at that location, right? Uh, so that would be T, right? We cannot see the vectors here. They're not preview, but they're available for our use, okay? And that'll happen a lot as well. You see that you bring in a component and not everything that is part of that component, you actually use it, right? Sometimes it's actually just the, the developers of the software, you know I mean, kind of like giving us like, hey, well, I mean, in case you need it, I mean, it's there, it's not super used, 
but sometimes we have the space. What the heck? I right? will throw it in there. Right? Like it's a free, a free one, right? Uh, we we'll also get the curve parameters, right? Which is T, right? which is uh, right? this little T, right? Um, which is this right here, right? Parameter T list right there. Uh, curve parameter is the number that tells you how far along the curve point happened. This point happened. We can use these numbers later if we want to evaluate different things about a curve. For example, curvature or torso. For now, we will only use the P points. And again, just so that you see those, right, is this one's right here. So it gives us now a parameter list right here. Okay, parameter values at division points. Okay, and you have this big old list right here. All right, guys. So we'll make a new line component between two points, right? We'll click on the on the canvas, right? All right. So we'll bring in a new line component, right? Now this time. Instead of setting points directly inside this input parameter, we will inherit data from both P parameters. Right? P outputs are shared with the A and B inputs on the line component. Okay, so let's try that. So I bring in a line component. Oops. All right. Bring this right here. So again, we have points. Right? So I want to bring that right there, and then I want to connect that right there. Okay? And we have this beautiful mess. Okay. Now, I think I talk about it right here, right? Because this is how I actually should look. Right? So we should have eleven lines connecting them. Now I talk about it right here, right? So if when connecting P outputs uh, to A and B inputs. The resulting line looks as follows. We must flip the direction of one of the curves so they're matching directions. Okay, let's see what's happening, right? So the first point uh, is going all the way to the last one of this curve. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the command. All right, let me change my screen right here, color real quick. Uh, appearance, colors, let me go for black or dark gray. If you actually type dir dir right on Rhino, this actually works for meshes or for curves, right? Uh, and you select an object, right click, it gives you these arrows, right? It, it gives you the way in in which it's flowing. Okay, so let's take a look, right? You guys see the arrows, the white arrows? Okay, so that's the way that that one's flowing. Okay, so I'm gonna escape. I'm gonna enter to repeat. Right, this one's going up. You guys see it? So they're flipped, they're inverse, right? So the start of the the, the right line uh, is the end of the left line, okay? So let me go ahead and, and change this real quick again, the colors. So anyone knows how to fix this? Comment to fix this? So in essence, what do we want to do? Flip, right? Flip them. So should we try that? Flip, right? Select the curve, right click, and now they should be going on the same direction. You see that? Now, this is a good question, right? Why? Why are those directions different? Why were those different? Maybe the A B or switch. It has to do more with how you drew it. I mean, for one, I started from one corner, went the other way. I ended up on that corner, and then I came back down. Right? So, so it's how you draw it. And that's just the big, big uh, uh, idea right here. Okay. So again, we have curve, curve, connecting line. I can update, and is live. Right? We have no matter how funky this this line is. Okay, so again, that's a good one to remember, right? The flip command, right? So in case it has, hey, looks weird, right? So in Rhino, we type flip, select one of the curves, enter, okay? Now we get into a little bit of the, um, I guess, um, I guess technical parts of this, right? 
uh, these things, and by these things I mean this right here, I mean this, right? These things are called wires, right? Uh, and they always connect one output with an input. Simple, okay? Now, you cannot share inputs with inputs. That is not allowed, right? So, again, you know, have an input, right, with this input, no work, right? So you see it's not allowing me to, to do that, right? Uh, you cannot share inputs with inputs, that is not allowed, or share outputs with outputs. Uh, what is this? And if you try to make a loop of wires, right, say that you come back from this end right there and try to feed it back to the system, you get this error, right? So, and if you try to make a loop of wires, say, uh, take one output and close it back to another input, it will fail. I will say that the algorithm is recursive and cannot solve. So again, right? Because then now you're feeding these lines right into the same um, um, algorithm, and again it gives you that big old red right there. Recursive data stream found. This component depends on itself, so we have to undo. Okay, and it works the same on, on Grasshopper as we do that uh, undo part. So it is always right, stepwise, right? We go from left to right, and you can never go back to earlier components, okay? At least through that same stream, right, of information, right? If you want to change the number of divisions in any of the existing lines, I can go into the end input, right? We, we right click and pick a different number. Let's go for 20. What do I mean? Okay, so if we go right here, right click, Set integer, say now I want to do 20, enter. All right, so now one line has 20 divisions and the other one 10, but I can update this right here. I can bring this to 20 and now going from 10, it has 20, right? Simple and that, right? Uh, so we have both lines with 20 in there. So that's actually quite annoying, right? Because we have to make sure both ends have the same value all the time. It always means your work is double. Right? I have to go set one up and then I have to go back, set another one, right? The way to solve this is to make both inputs depend on the same value, right? So inputs, right? both inputs depend same value. For example, we can take an integer parameter which is just a single number. This does not actually make anything new like the other two components. Uh, and this can be found under the params tab, primitive and integer. Okay, so we're looking for this one right here. Let's find it, okay? So params, uh, primitive, integer, okay? So it was params, primitive, uh, integer, right? And we have that, okay? So we click on the canvas, why? And we drop it, right? Uh, we right click on it, right? We set an integer, and let's say we define it as 30, okay? So, and then we share its value with both inputs, right? So we connect it, right? And we fit it, right, as such, okay? So I'll come back in here, right click, set integer, say 30, enter, right? Commit changes right there. Then I can, right, bring this right there, oops, right, say that right there, okay? So what happened? Right, what's going on, right? So that a conversion fell from integer to curve, okay? What happened here? So again, we have to look into what's asking us and what we're feeding it, okay? So what is C? The curve, right? What is N? 
the count, right? So I did this, right? Wrong, okay? So this is actually a good way, right, to talk about disconnecting these points right here, right? Because we actually needed that, okay? So again, it matters, right? Think about the, think about the uh, those photographs that we're looking right now in the video. I don't know, the old computers that you have to plug stuff in, we're kind of doing the same stuff, right? We're allowing data to flow in, all right? But it has to be very particular. I mean, it has to be very specific, I'm sorry, right? Which one Which one is which, right? So now I can come in here, set integer. I can go go crazy, right? Uh, five, wow, that was crazy, right? Five, I uh, say, because uh, like, come down, Munoz, right? So, right? So it's an integer, right? We can go right, 150 and we'll do that right there. Okay, and it just divides them. Okay, good. All right, go back and change it, the integer parameter value. Why right, we right click on it. All right, now the important thing is that it changes everywhere at the same time, okay? Now, even better, we'll be used to, we'll be used to use a slider right to control this as our out input number right division number it's not fixed right i mean okay so i want to divide it but you know i'm still studying this form i might want to divide it by 10 20 50 and i don't have to i don't want to be right clicking and selecting each number every time all right so we'll use the slider to very quickly change the number of divisions all right and that is under Parameters, right? Input number slider right here, and we click on canvas. Okay. Now, by default, a slider goes from zero to one, and it has three decimal spaces. And this is a slider. Okay. Let's take a look at that. Okay. So that's an integer. So cute. Uh, it's like a little number. Okay. Let's see. Let's see you slider come in here and show us what you got. Okay. So I haven't connected anything, right? But again, by default goes from zero to one and it has three decimal points. And again, we can really, really zoom in here right? and, and, you know, more precisely um, fix this right here. You see that number of divisions right there. Okay. So uh, we have brought in our slider. We can change it to be whole numbers instead of floating numbers. Right, right clicking on it and select edit. Now this window is going, oops, All right, this window pops up. Okay, now what we're looking for is this and, right, integer numbers. Okay, so we're gonna set it from one to 100. Okay, so let's do that. So right click, edit. Now, right now, right, it says floating point numbers. We flip it to N, right? Notice that the decimal points uh, went away, right? Integers. Now, minimum, we wanna do a one, enter, right? And we wanna do a hundred, right? And we do okay. Okay, so again, now I have this slider that goes from one to a hundred. Okay. Uh, do that. Now we connect them, right? So that they both share. So we're doing the same thing, right? We're sharing right, this right there, and that right there. And now we can populate this, right? In the, you know, fractions of a second. Right? Just kind of divide it right here versus having to go in here right here and set it all the time okay so let's put this maybe a little bit kind of like that okay all right guys questions so far not sure if i'll have the answer but yeah okay making sense so far i mean like you give me something i give you something back yeah, and how can we actually shorten, right, uh, the amount of work perhaps by the 
the logic behind your definition. Okay. So we connected them, right? Bring in our cables, and we do that. Now we can change number of divisions completely in real time. And that's the, that's the key part right there, as we see fit. If you click on the display menu, you can switch between icon view, right? And text view. And I'm surprised that no one has asked me yet because I have them actually flipped, right? Uh, what does that mean? This right here, right? Do I, do I, do I? Certain places actually, oh, actually I, I show you here. So, so far, right, I've been using the text. What do I mean? Well, when I bring a component, it has the name right there, right? Divide, right? Line. But actually, I can, there's two ways of seeing this, right? So if I go to display, right? And I, I um, disable the draw icons, I see the text. Um, it, uh, it varies, right? I mean, you'll see that it's more, you'll see which one you like more. Um, they work, I mean, they do the same. It's just graphically which one, which one uh, you prefer. All right, but let's read a little bit more about that, right? Uh, icon keeps it clean and small, right? That's kind of like the idea. The icons are smaller, right? The text sometimes, you know, it takes more more space, right? So icons, right? Clean and small. Now, my personal argument sometimes is that, especially as you're getting started with this, right? You don't know, if, if you don't know what that component is just by its icon, well, you're lost, right? I mean, you're like, oh, shit, well, that's that. What's that? Right. At least here you have some text. All right, it says divide right there. And you know, if all goes well, I can go in here, type divide, see which one is it. Maybe try a few and see if I get lucky. And I, oh, there it is. All right, and you can and you can uh, match them. Okay. And again, a lot of the, uh, for example, right? If you guys look at over here, this book that I have over here. All right, it has the definitions right here, and you'll see that it actually uses text. All right, I think. When you're learning this, I think text, right? It's, it's a little bit easier, but um, you're gonna find both, especially again, when you're going online and maybe using other definitions that you find online and you wanna troubleshoot something or you're, you maybe you don't find the, like this one, for example, I don't download the file, I had to create it, right? So I was just looking at these icons right here, going to Grasshopper, looking for them and adding them right there. But because he had the text over here, if he has the icon, I'm like, oh, which one is that one? Okay. But just point that out because you will run into those when you're looking at, at, at other definitions somewhere. Okay. Now, there is also what's called fancy wires. Okay. Um, let's look into this, right? Now, what is fancy wires? Well, as you see, actually, these wires right here, they're double, right? Versus this one over here is that they're single. They actually represent different things. Right, double, right, means that there is more than one item flowing, right, from left to right. If we place our cursor on the output P, we can see that it's a list of numbers. Okay, that's this right here. So P has a list. So that means that this wire, I don't know if it's officially how it's called, but it's loaded, right? It has multiple components going into A. And that's why it looks different. This one over here, it only has one value, which in this case is what? 40. That's it. Huh? Number of divisions, 40. So that's the, the how you recognize it. Okay. So that it's over here. Display, draw fancy wires. And if I disable that, you see that all the wires look the same. And again, since we are visual learners, right? Uh, really, definitely suggested to keep the uh, fancy wires on. Uh, icons and text. Um, well, you know that that's up to you, but you'll see that you know we'll be using both. Okay. Plus, it's a good training, right? I mean, start recognizing okay which one matches which one, right? Which 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 one is the icon and which one is the text description. Okay. Uh, so I talk about that. Uh, so uh, unless you have fancy wires enabled, they will all appear as single wires. It is recommended to have enabled. Um, you can also rename this. Now I would, uh, you know, maybe advise to for right now just work with them as they are, right? If you want to give components a special name, 
right? You can actually give it a name by right click on it, rename it, and that will appear on it. What do I mean, right? All right, well, I can click right here. It says divide, all right? Actually, right here, maybe this one, line, all right? It says just LN, but I can come in here. Like, this is a very important component, right? So this is a line segment, and I can do that right there. But then again, you know what I mean? You kind of start messing with them, and, it, and again, sometimes you might be thrown off, right, by some other definitions, and you see, like, customized names right there. But if I go to display, draw icons, they go back to this kind of smaller, clean version of them. Okay, so do that. Draw icons, uh, draw the text. Okay, and that's uh, kind of where where I left off on on this, um, at least on the um, manual right here. But let me show you guys where actually, you know, this will take you. Okay. Um, I was opening, let's see if I can open this guy right here. Okay. So it was in that one right there. It was this one. Okay, questions so far? That was only two videos out of the first five right, that I did. But then again, just think, just remember guys, back in the day when you learned Rhino, I, I would see the same faces that I see right now. Like what? Okay, so um, this is kind of like what I mean, right? I mean, once you open a, a, a Rhino file, it's like okay, cool, right? But then now uh, we open its um, Grasshopper um, file. Let's actually open it right here. Grasshopper. Whoops. And then let's go to file, open document. Okay, so, um, so we go from this division right here into creating this lofted uh, surface. Okay. Which um, yeah, like this is a bit right here. Okay. So we have now the same, right? I mean, the number of divisions right now here playing playing with that. As you can see now, um, we have now introduced right, this this uh, this uh, arcs right that that are flipping. Or changing the orientation of that, we have this B component or Z component. I'm sorry, right, which brings uh, things uh, upwards. Let me turn off the loft so you guys can see. So again, you can hide, let's say, a component right there under the preview. I have actually added this color mapping right here, right, in terms of uh, coloring based on the curvature of these lines right here. Right, so let's see. Let me change a few things over here, for example. Let's add that right there, and let's maybe update some of these points. So, those update right there, and maybe even we can bring them over here and kind of create that right there. So you guys can see how the coloring changes. And this is going to be your first task, right? I mean, to get to this point over here, uh, lofting this. So this was, this was videos all the way to five, right? Creating basics right here. Because, I mean, again, as always, as anything, the best way to just really get this information is just following it, right? So the script that I have for you guys is of these two videos right here, first and second. Um, we have the third one right here, which is gonna start talking about now uh, how to create actually arcs, right? Between the points rather than line segments. Um, from there, right, we add a center line, which when then we move upwards, right, which is, uh, 
I'm sorry, uh, this point right here, uh, where is it? Uh, this point right here tells you the, the curvature, these arcs. Uh, and then it changes. Okay. Um, and then it actually, you know, you can color code um, those right there. Right. You can actually um, set those, um, you know, in order to to match them with this list. Uh, I don't think I talk about that, but, you know, you can bring some of the sticky notes right here. And, you know, it gives you the what's kind of spitting out. Right. In this case, it's giving you some RGB values right, for each of those curves. And it has a list right here of all of those values that are are um, connected to that form. OK. Um, questions so far? OK. And so that, again, going back to, let's say now, And say stacking planes. So going back to where we started actually today um, with this this definition called stacking planes. Kind of like left you guys hanging there when I was talking about this one, right? Because I wanted to get going with those other ones right there. So we'll go right here, grasshopper. Um, Open its matching definition file. Open document. Stacking planes. We we'll get this right here. Um, so this entire definition uh, was entirely copied from um, this book. It's actually the first, the first uh, section right here, which I will have for you guys here. You know, you should definitely think about uh, a bunch of notes on it, right? Because, I mean, again, it tell, it gives you everything right here. And it's just, again, it's a really good way to start practicing. Okay, so what does that component does, right? How do they connect it? Of course, you're going to run into a few um, things here and there, particularly in terms of how, you know, how to switch wires and, you know, how to, I guess, maybe play stuff around. But that's why watching this introduction videos is super important, guys. Okay, now uh, where I left off on this one right here, so now what happens if I have right, a circle right there and I have a polygon over here, maybe that one right there. So right, we have learned right, that we have all of this is generated through an input curve. Okay, so if I go ahead and set one curve, now I change this guy right there, right? It operates on that specific curve right there. Let me move this guy over here. Okay. So, and then let me move this one over here. So we can just maybe compare different one. Because it all, one definition has, I don't know about infinity, right? But it has a good amount of variations, right? So, okay, we tried that one right there. Uh, you know, these are the components that we have on it. Let's say for right now, I'll just uh, bake this one's right here. So I have that one right there. It's asking me for a layer that I want to uh, throw it into. Let's say, oh no, I have one five. I'll do five. I can select that, except for this. Right? And I can move it right there. Okay. Um, and actually, move. Oops. Let's, let's, let me leave the, the, that input curve. Let's see if I can pull. Let me release that. Ah. Like that. There you go. Oh, I undid the undid the the big. Okay. So we select that, and I'm going to deselect the curve. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to move that right there, leave it there. Uh, let's say now that I change the, the input, right? Right now I have a circle, right? Uh, set one curve. Now let's see if I try the pentagon. 
and get that right there. Okay, cool. So now what if I deform? Right, that pentagon. Uh, I need to see through it. There we go. Okay, what if I select that pentagon, right? Pick its point, right? And then I do that. Uh, we start getting that. Not only that, right? Why it looks so funny is right? because the height right now and the uh, floor ratio. Uh, by the way, this is going to also test the the strength of your processor. I don't know if you can hear my laptop kind of uh, fanning. In there. That right there. Yeah. Right. So we have those forms. So for example, um, you know, I can select give us that one right there. Bake this one as well. Right. Send it to node to four. Okay. Select all of this except for that and four. Okay. All right. Make sure I can move it right. Oh. All right. So that's the that one right there. Okay. So you can start seeing that with one, you know, definition, we we get all of that. And and again, not everything has to be performed in the in grasshopper, right? And so, for example, after creating this uh, tower right there. I, created this sphere and I just use some uh, trim right in order to maybe create this um, this uh, form right here this curvature was done afterwards right so I have um, you know I can use uh, trim right here it's the, did I use trim or boolean difference boolean difference Subtract from right this one's right with the sphere. Right, let's see, I probably got a few errors right there, but I can now um, start playing with that. And for right now, I mean, it's just uh, get it, familiarize yourself with it. I mean, you know, get the get comfortable with it. Um, but I do need you guys to go through this this videos right here okay three four five and you know i'll take it from there yeah uh yeah 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 everything will be in blackboard right there what else a grasshopper okay and color that Questions? Questions? Yeah. Okay, guys. It's a lot of fun, guys.